Hello, my name is Scott Dillon. I am the Equal Opportunity Officer and Title IX Officer for ABCCM. I am here today to speak with you all about ABCCM's obligations not to discriminate. To help fund the work we do, ABCCM receives funds under the Federal Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, which replaced the Workforce Investment Act. As a recipient of this funding, ABCCM is prohibited from engaging in discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, disability, sex, age, political affiliation or belief, citizenship, and on the basis that someone is a participant in any program or activity that receives financial assistance under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, whether the program is provided by ABCCM or some other entity. In addition to our legal obligations under the WIOA, ABCCM, either because of other laws or because it chooses to do so, has expressly adopted procedures that impose additional obligations on our organization not to engage in discrimination on the basis of an individual's parental status, marital status, family status, income, sexual orientation, or genetic information. We take our legal and self-imposed obligations seriously. As a program participant, we want to make sure that you feel welcomed and that you're able to engage fully with ABCCM at all times. The ultimate goals that I have today are to make sure that you understand what ABCCM's policies regarding non-discrimination are and to make sure you know what to do if you believe that you have experienced discrimination. We give this training within seven days of your arrival to make sure that you are aware of the policies early on. If you have questions about the training, you should feel free to direct them to scott.dillon at abccm.org or fill out a question form, place it in an envelope with my name, and leave it in the drop box located at the front desk. I will respond to your questions within seven days. Non-discrimination is ABCCM's responsibility. ABCCM may not discriminate against applicants for programs and employment, residents, staff, volunteers, or members of the general public on the basis that they are a member of a protected class. ABCCM will not retaliate against individuals who report discrimination, individuals who have furnished information to or assisted or participated in any manner in an investigation, review, hearing, or any other activity related to a discrimination complaint or other type of enforcement of non-discrimination law. To clarify what I mean when I say protected class, I mean that ABCCM cannot discriminate against you because of your race, color, religion, sex, national origin, citizenship, for example if you had a green card or were a refugee, age, disability status, political affiliation or belief, or because of your status as a participant in any WIA or WIOA program. If you ever need to revisit this policy and are a resident of our homelessness service programs, please review the section on non-discrimination that begins on page 6 of your resident handbook. Other program participants can view this policy on ABCCM's website or request a copy from any staff member of ABCCM. In addition to those obligations, either because of other laws or because of its own policies, ABCCM's own non-discrimination policies go beyond prohibiting discrimination based on the classes listed on the last slide. As a resident, you should know that it is our policy not to discriminate against anyone on the basis of the factors listed on the prior slide and the additional factors listed on this slide. This slide provides some legal definitions of how discrimination might manifest itself. So the more obvious type of discrimination is disparate treatment. For example, if a case manager said to a female resident of Steadfast House who wanted to access job skills training for a job that is traditionally performed by men, that she ought to do something else because that job is man's work. That would be an example of treating someone differently because of their sex and or gender. Disparate impact can be less obvious. For example, if ABCCM had a rule that required volunteer cook teams to serve the shelter with the higher number of residents before taking volunteers to serve the smaller shelter, that would have a disparate impact on the women who reside at Steadfast House. And to be clear, that is not our policy. The third broad class of unlawful conduct in the area of non-discrimination would be to retaliate against anyone who engages in protected civil rights activity. So, for instance, if you believe that you had experienced discrimination and you reported it to the Equal Employment Opportunity Officer and your case manager decided to recommend that you be dismissed from the program, that would be a form of retaliation. 
On a fundamental level, discrimination says to someone, I reject you because of who you are. No one should have to experience this, and we want you to know that we do not tolerate discrimination. An additional common type of discrimination is harassment. Harassment is unwelcome conduct on the basis of protected class which creates an environment that is intimidating, hostile, or abusive. Unwelcome conduct can include what is not limited to offensive jokes, slurs, epithets, or name-calling, physical assaults or threats, intimidation, ridicule or mockery, insults or put-downs, or offensive objects or pictures. This slide provides some examples of how gender discrimination might manifest itself at ABCCM. Disparate treatment would be not giving men and women the same access to certain educational offerings, or choosing to serve one shelter because of a preference for working with a particular gender. An example of disparate impact would be a neutral policy that only individuals who can lift 100 pounds can work at ABCCM's free clinic. An example of retaliation would be where a volunteer refuses to serve a meal to a resident because she filed a complaint that ABCCM was discriminating on the basis of gender. Another form of discrimination would be pregnancy, childbirth, and related medical complications discrimination. Discriminating against a woman because of a pregnancy, childbirth, or medical condition related to pregnancy or childbirth constitutes sex discrimination and is strictly prohibited. For example, ABCCM penalizing a woman who needed to request time off due to a pregnancy-related sickness would be a form of this type of discrimination. Another form of discrimination is transgender status and gender identity discrimination. Transgender is an umbrella term for persons whose gender identity, gender expression, or behavior does not conform to that typically associated with the sex to which they are assigned at birth. Gender identity refers to a person's internal sense of being male, female, or something else. Gender expression refers to how a person communicates their gender identity to others through behavior, clothing, hairstyles, voice, or body characteristics. Discrimination against a person because they are transgender, identify as a particular gender, or because of how they express their gender constitutes discrimination based on sex and is strictly prohibited. Examples of transgender or gender identity discrimination would be prohibiting a person who is transgender from volunteering for ABCCM, or making jokes, conveying threats, or using verbal slurs to make a transgender program participant feel unwelcome in ABCCM's programs. These are examples of sexual harassment, threatening someone so that they will engage in unwanted sexual activity, sexual innuendo and comments, asking questions about a person's sexual history, ogling or leering, an unwanted neck or shoulder massage, brushing against a person or unwanted touching, frequent jokes about sex or men or women, stalking a person, letters or displays of material of a sexual nature, or attempted or actual sexual assault. This is not an inclusive list. Sexual harassment and the examples of gender discrimination that I listed on the prior slides are expressly prohibited by ABCCM. Report violations to ABCCM management, state, or federal officials. It is our hope that you will be treated with respect and in a non-discriminatory manner for the duration of your time with ABCCM. However, should you feel that you have experienced discrimination, we do not tolerate discrimination. We want you to consider filing a complaint using the process outlined in this presentation. If you experience discrimination at ABCCM because of your race, color, religion, sex, national origin, citizenship, age, disability status, political affiliation, or beliefs, or because you are a participant in a program or activity financially assisted under WIA or WIOA, you should follow the procedure outlined in pages 7 to 9 of the Residence Handbook. I want to be clear that this procedure is separate from a different ABCCM grievance process that is to be used in the event that an issue arises and it has arisen for reasons other than your race, color, religion, sex, national origin, citizenship, age, disability status, political affiliation or beliefs, or because you are or were 
a WIA or WIOA program participant. We'll go over that procedure later. But again, if you believe that you have been discriminated against because of your race, color, religion, sex, national origin, citizenship, age, disability status, political affiliation, or beliefs, or because you are a program participant, then you should follow the procedure at pages 8 to 9 of the Resident Handbook. Please note that you have the option of filing a complaint directly with ABCCM through our Equal Employment Officer, Scott Dillon, or with the Civil Rights Center. So you can file a complaint either with me, Scott Dillon, or with the U.S. Department of Labor's Civil Rights Center, but you should do so within 180 days, approximately six months, of the incident in which you believe discrimination occurred. Complaint forms are provided by ABCCM through its website, or you can ask for a hard copy of the form from me, Scott Dillon. If you are filing a complaint with the U.S. Department of Labor directly, they have forms on their website at the link above. The form will give you some guidance, but I would like for us to go over what needs to be in a complaint in order to be properly evaluated by me or the CRC. Each complaint must contain a signature of the complainant or his or her authorized representative. It must contain the complainant's name and address or specify another means of contacting him or her. It must identify the respondent, the individual or entity that the complainant alleges is responsible for the discrimination, and it must describe the complainant's allegations with enough detail to allow the Equal Employment Officer or CRC Director to determine a number of factors. These factors include whether there is jurisdiction over the complaint, whether the complaint was filed on time, and whether the complaint has apparent merit. That is, whether the complainant's allegations, if true, would violate any of the non-discrimination or equal opportunity provisions of WIA, Title IX, or the regulations. As Equal Employment Opportunity Officer, I will acknowledge receipt of your complaint within five days of it having been filed. I will review your complaint to determine if I have jurisdiction, and I will make that determination within 15 days of my acknowledgement letter. You may choose to attempt to resolve your complaint through alternative dispute resolution, but if you would prefer, I will conduct a full investigation into the allegations. You should also know that you have a right to representation, which need not be an attorney, and your identity and the identity of any witnesses will not be disclosed to anyone unless it is truly necessary for the investigation. There are extra timing pieces if you file a complaint with ABCCM directly. Specifically, I have 90 days from the date of your complaint to issue a Notice of Final Action. If I fail to issue a Notice of Final Action within 90 days, then you have 30 days from the 90-day deadline to file a complaint with the U.S. Department of Labor's Civil Rights Center. If BCCM does give a Notice of Final Action, but you're not satisfied with the decision or solution, you may also then file a complaint with the CRC. That complaint must be filed within 30 days of receipt of ABCCM's Notice of Final Action. If you are dismissed from ABCCM programming and you believe that the reason for your termination had to do with something other than your race, color, religion, sex, national origin, citizenship, for example if you had a green card or were a refugee, age, disability status, political affiliation or belief, or because of your status as a participant in any WIA or WIOA funded program, the ABCCM offers you a separate grievance policy that is detailed on the handbook at pages 49 through 51. So an example of this might be if a case manager accused you of theft and you were dismissed from the program. If you felt that the accusation was because of your race, color, gender, sex, religion, national origin, citizenship, age, disability status, political affiliation or belief, or status as a participant, then we would ask you to use the WIA, WIOA complaint process it is described at pages 6 through 9 of the handbook and that we just discussed. But if the reason for the false accusation had to do with something else, maybe you chew gum loudly and it drives your case manager nuts, then you have access to a grievance and appeal policy described on pages 49 through 51 of the handbook. Ultimately, ABCCM wants to go beyond its legal obligations and ensure that ABCCM is a place where everyone is treated in a respectful manner. We are committed to serving you.
If you have questions about the training, you should feel free to direct them to me, Scott Dillon, at scott.dillon at abccm.org. If you're a resident, you can email me there or fill out a question form and drop it off in the locked question box at the front desk. Your questions will be answered within seven days.